Let us now take the next model from time and distance which is based on boats and streams. Now in this particular case we have a stream or nothing but a flowing river and in which a boat has to cover a certain distance. Let us understand what are the different cases when it comes to boats and streams. As you can see here we have a river which is flowing at a certain speed that is SS. It is nothing but the speed of the stream or it can also be called as the speed of the current. A stream or current is nothing but flowing water and whenever the water is flowing it has some speed which is taken as SS. Let us consider a boat here in this river which has to cover a certain distance. Now here the boat can move in two possible directions. Either it can go against the flow of the stream which is referred as upstream or along with the flow of the stream that is downstream. So upstream is nothing but opposite to the stream and downstream is nothing but in the same direction of the stream. So let us take what are the various possible cases in case of boats and streams here. Now as given here the speed of the stream or the current or it can also be called as speed of the river is equal to SS. The speed of the boat in still water is SB. That means when this boat is kept in still water nothing but a lake then it can be moving at a speed of SB. So here we can say that the speed of the boat along the stream along the stream is nothing but downstream. So speed of the boat along the stream should be taken as SB plus SS. So downstream speed SD is equal to SB plus SS that is nothing but speed of the boat plus speed of the stream and the speed of the boat against the stream or upstream when the boat is going against the stream it is referred as upstream. So speed of the boat upstream that is SU should be taken as SB minus SS. So speed of the boat minus speed of the stream will give the speed upstream. So the two important points here are downstream speed and upstream speed. As you can see here downstream speed is equal to SB plus SS that is sum of the speeds of boat and the stream and upstream speed is the difference here that is boat speed minus the stream speed. After taking the downstream speed and upstream speed let us now see how can we find out the speed of the boat and the speed of the stream when SD and SU that is downstream and upstream speeds are given to us. So the speed of the boat here can be directly taken as downstream speed plus upstream speed divided by 2. So in some cases when the downstream and upstream speeds are specified we can take the speed of the boat as SD plus SU by 2. And similarly the speed of the stream or the current can be taken as SD minus SU by 2. So speed of the stream is equal to downstream speed minus upstream speed by 2. Remember friends in some cases instead of boat the question is regarding a man who is swimming in the river. So that can again be considered in the same way. No, nothing but we need to just replace the speed of the boat with the speed of the man in still water. So equations and all remain same. The only difference is instead of a boat we have a man who can either swim upstream or he can swim downstream. So whether the question is related to boat which can row upstream or downstream or a man who can swim upstream or downstream the equation remains same. Before we take up some examples, let me draw your attention to one very important point here so that there is no confusion while solving the questions. If you observe, when the boat is going upstream, the direction of flow of water and the direction of flow of boat is opposite to each other. Now, In the previous cases, we have learned that whenever two bodies are moving in opposite direction, the relative speed should be taken as sum of the speeds. But in this case, when the boat is moving upstream, that is against the flow of water or in the opposite direction of flow of water we have taken the speed as the difference of the speed which is quite opposite to the relative speed case and similarly when the boat is going downstream that is when the direction of flow of water and the direction of boat are same here we have taken the downstream speed as sum of the speeds but when we discussed about relative speed we have learned that whenever two bodies move in the same direction the relative speed should be taken as difference of the speeds. So friends don't get confused that why are we taking opposite signs here. Understand this particular case of boats and streams is no way related to relative speed. Here when a boat is moving against the water or along the water it is not considered as relative speed because there is a physical contact between the boat and the flow of water there. In the previous case of relative speed there was no physical contact when the two trains were moving in opposite direction or in same direction. So there the relative speed is taken as sum of the speeds in opposite direction and the difference of the speeds in same direction. But here as you can see when the boat goes upstream 
the water which is coming from the opposite direction tries to pushes the boat backwards so the boat struggles to move in the forward direction hence it takes more time and when it takes more time we can understand that the speed of the boat has reduced so when the boat is going in upstream direction we take the speed as difference of the speed why because it is a reduced speed similarly when the boat goes downstream the water now is coming from behind and it pushes the boat in the forward direction that is it is helping the boat move faster so as the speed has increased for downstream we take it as sum of the speeds so let me make it clear don't compare these two speeds that is downstream speed and upstream speed with the concept of relative speed let us now take the first example from boats and streams which is related to a man swimming in the river let us look at the question here a man can swim with the stream at the rate of 3 km per hour and against the stream at the rate of 2 km per hour how long will it take for him to swim 7.5 km in still water so as you can see here a man can swim with the stream we know that with the stream or along the stream is nothing but downstream so a man can swim downstream at the speed of 3 km per hour and against the stream against the stream is nothing but upstream so upstream he can swim at the rate of 2 km per hour so very clearly the downstream speed sd is equals to 3 km per hour and the upstream speed su equals to 2 km per hour how long will it take for him to swim 7.5 km in still water so the distance which he has to swim is 7.5 km and we need to find out the time required by the man to cover this distance we know that to find out the time we should have the distance and the speed distance is already specified in the question that is 7.5 km now the only thing which is required is the speed of the man in still water now we know that the speed of the man or the speed of the boat sb can be calculated as downstream speed plus upstream speed divided by 2 so this can be taken as 3 plus 2 divided by 2 as the downstream speed is 3 km per hour and the upstream speed is 2 km per hour so 3 plus 2 by 2 is nothing but 5 by 2 which is 2.5 km per hour so very clearly the speed of the man is equals to 2.5 km per hour now the time required by the man to cover this distance can be given as distance by speed of the man the distance to be covered divided by speed of the man distance here is 7.5 km and the speed is 2.5 km per hour so 7.5 km and 2.5 km per hour now 2.5 goes 3 times here so 3 will be the answer 3 hours so the time required for him to swim 7.5 km in still water that is very important understand he is covering this distance in still water so that is the reason we need to consider the speed of the man in still water right so that will be 3 hours because the units are kilometers and kilometers per hour the time will be in hours let us now take another example from boats and streams the question here is a man can row 9 km in 3 hours against a stream running at 2 km per hour how long would he take in rowing the same distance down the stream so as given in the question the distance covered by the man is 9 km in 3 hours against a stream that means he covered this distance upstream and the stream is running at the speed of 2 km per hour how long would he take in rowing the same distance so he has to cover the same distance down the stream and we need to find out the time required to do that now we know that when a man or a boat rows upstream the speed should be taken as speed upstream is nothing but speed of the boat or speed of the man minus the speed of the stream and this is equal to the distance covered by time taken to cover the distance we know that the speed of the stream here is 2 km per hour the distance covered by the man is 9 km in 3 hours so from this very clearly the speed of the man will be equal to this is 3 3 plus 2 that is 5 km per hour now once we have got to know the speed of the man we can find out how long will it take to cover the same distance down the stream we know that downstream the equation can be taken as speed of the man plus speed of the stream which is equals to the distance traveled by time taken to cover the distance so here speed of the man is 5 plus speed of the stream as given here is 2 km per hour the distance to be covered is 9 km divided by time so from this the time required will be 9 by 7 
can be taken as 9 by 7 hours. Why? Because the distance is in kilometers and the speeds are in kilometers per hour. So, the same distance can be covered by the man when he goes downstream in 9 by 7 hours. So, friends, as you can see here, this is how simple is to solve the questions from boats and streams. We simply need to consider the proper equation that is the upstream or the downstream equation. So, as you can see here, the upstream equation is speed of the man minus speed of the stream equals to distance by time and the downstream equation can be taken as speed of the man plus speed of the stream equals to distance by time. So, with the help of these equations, we can just find out the missing variable and get the required answer. So, these are the various concepts that are generally asked from time and distance. That's all from this topic. See you in the next session. Thank you.